Well, greetings, greetings, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am glad to be back with you for another Planting the Heavens in the Earth. I am Faye Powell, and we're going to pick back up from a lesson that we've been teaching for a while. And I say for a while because I'm not on here um, every Tuesday because I have guests planters on with me from time to time. But what we're going to do is um, going to pick up from where we last stopped when I was teaching on planting the heavens and the earth, but I was teaching on uh, digging out the dirt and drawing from the wells of salvation. All right, just bear with me for a minute. I'm getting situated. Thank you, Lord, for your word to us. Thank you for your truths. Thank you for and unveiling yourself like never before. And we are seeing you in undeniable ways. And as we are seeing you, we are changed into the image of the same. We see ourselves and we see one another. We see your plan and purpose. We see what you predestined even before the foundation of the world. And we see it fulfilled in Christ Jesus, the Lord. So we say thank you. Thank you as the seed, as your word goes forth. Thank you that your heaven is being planted in the earth. Hallelujah. And it's bringing forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But we glorify you. Amen. Amen. All right, let me grab my notes and let's get going. I'm probably going to need a slight uh, overview at what we looked at last time we were together. Let me get this up here out of the way if I can. There we go. Okay. Again, we're looking at digging out the dirt and drawing drawing from the wells of salvation. Digging out the dirt and drawing from the wells of salvation. I don't want to do a lot of review. I want to encourage you to go back and listen to previous uh, teachings along this line. This is here on Facebook as well as on our um, Planting the Heavens YouTube channel. So please take advantage of those materials, but I am going to do a slight overview. We find that Abraham had wells and Isaac inherited the wells when Abraham died. And when Abraham died, there were Philistines, there were enemies, there were haters that came and throwed dirt, put dirt, poured dirt into the wells of Isaac. Now, the problem with that is if we fill the wells with dirt, we have no water. And if we cut off our water supply, I hope you're listening. If we cut off our water supply, we cut off our life supply. Not only the life supply of our livestock, our animals, our livelihood, manufacturing. I mean, life is cut off when the water source is cut off all the way across the board. So the enemies were cutting off or trying to cut off the life source of Isaac and his family and uh, his whole entourage. However, Isaac got his guys, they went back out and unstopped the whales and here come the Philistines again, okay? Putting more dirt back in. The Lord speaks to us, the Holy Spirit speaks to us, the scripture speaks to us. And we're making adjustments and we're throwing out dirt. We're getting out the dirt, but the enemy comes again and brings more dirt, more garbage, more trash, more gossip, uh, more discouraging news, uh, more reports, uh, x-rays that's not good, um, that's this, this contrary to what's been promised us uh, because of the gift of God. And so it winds up putting dirt back into the well. So it's not always or only the Philistines or the enemy that comes and put dirt in the wells. Sometimes we put dirt in our own wells and we stop up. I'm going to do it again. Our water supply, which means we're stopping up our life source. Okay. Right quickly, I just want to glance really, really quick at just some things I've jotted down right quick that I categorized as dirt. And I, this is not um, 
uh, an exhausted list, you fill in the blank for what your dirty is. Okay, don't be looking across at nobody else talking about their dirt. You fill in the blank for what your dirty is. Watch this so that you can remove your dirt from your well and draw. Come on, come on, come on. From the wells of salvation that the Lord has given us as our gift. All right, come on now, come on. So then, Defining dirt as doubt and unbelief in God and his word, disappointments, bitterness, pride, envy, deception, sin, depression, strife, jealousy, sickness, disease, witchcraft, condemnation, addictions, greed, competition, comparisons, negativity, being critical, judgmental, fault finding, a superiority or inferiority complex. It's dirt. It's dirt, baby. Being religious and self-righteous. That's dirt. That's dirt. That's dirt. Playing the blame game. Shame is dirt. Codependence. Sucking, uh, shucking one's own responsibility. Being lazy, passive, having a double standard, compromise, arrogance, intimidation, sowing discord, Peace breaker, uh, a killjoy, gossip, unforgiveness, divisiveness, defensiveness, error, ignorance, indifference, an orphan spirit, self-pity, helplessness, hopelessness, defend, uh, 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 de defeatism, being uncommitted in a healthy way. Detached, isolated, selfish, controlling, manipulating, fearful, stingy, idolizing the flesh, whether it's yours or somebody else's. It's dirt, baby. It's dirt. Being high maintenance, needing, needing to be pampered, spoiled, wayward, throwing temper tantrums, bondages, being adversarial sabotaging self and others that's dirt destructiveness cornerly minded all of which or death which is a form of dirt that's in our own personal wells and it keeps us from drawing and drinking from the wells of salvation that are already given to us are you listening the wells of salvation, the wells of wholeness, the wellness, the, the wells of life, the wells of joy and peace. I'm thinking of Peter says, grace and peace, watch this, be multiplied. Do you know grace can be multiplied? Peace can be multiplied, but it's only multiplied in this place of digging out the dirt and drinking from the wells of salvation. What am I saying? It's only multiplied. We only access the wells of salvation, the waters, the living waters through intimacy and oneness with the king who gave us the wells in the first place. All right, let's keep going. Additionally, dirt is the law. And we're going to look at that in a few minutes. We're not going to look at it right now. Dirt is the law. And all of our man-made laws that we get from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil did you that? Dirt is the law and all of our man-made laws that we get from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For instance, eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Lord said to the Adams, the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. The day you eat thereof, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. Eat from all the other trees. Eat from the tree of life. Eat from the tree of Zoe. Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because the day you do, you shall surely die. What does he say? You would have detached from life and you are what you eat. Listen, listen, you are what you eat. So if you're eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to become, become cornerly minded. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Listen, a majority, if not at least eight out of 10 of our churches, and notice I said our, notice the pronoun, I didn't say God's churches, I said our churches are eating and have eaten and have been established from eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
For example, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil has uh, a branch of good, a branch of evil, then another branch of good and another branch of evil, and then another branch of good and another branch of evil. All right, for instance, eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let's do this again, as suggested from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Stop cussing, that's evil. Start praising, that's good. But if the source is not from the Holy Spirit, if the source of my agenda and the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is not motivated by the Holy Ghost, I'm just going through the empty motions. Are you listening? With no life, but a form. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a form. And you know what? That form looks very impressive to those of like faith. Did you get that? That form looks very impressive to those of like, in other words, birds of a feather flock together. In other words, my law from eating from the truth of knowledge of good and evil to stop cussing. Am I encouraging cuss? Absolutely not. But me stop cussing doesn't mean I'm not still cussing in my heart. Just because I changed my audible sound doesn't mean that the heart, come on here, has been cleaned up, that the dirt has been dug out of the heart. Are you getting this? Do you remember Jesus saying, you have heard it said of old, or by them of old, uh, you should not commit adultery. But I say unto you, if a man just looks on a woman and he's enticed with sinful lust to desire her body, he's already committed adultery with her, right? Did he touch her? Nope, he wished he could. He's thinking about it. He's touching her in his mind. He's touching her in his heart. So he is guilty. Are you listening? That's dirt. I don't care how we sit and how we dress it up and how we put on our makeup and how we put on our hat and how we fan our hanky and we put on our mink coats or we put on our tuxedos. Whenever we get through, that's an outer appearance. It reminds me of the whitewashed tombs, how when the sun hits them, beautiful, just sparkle as if diamonds are in the stone, but within, they're full of dead men's bones, corruption and decay. Wow, are inside those tombs. All right, dirt, 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 dirt. Again, the, the uh, dirt is the law, and we're going to get there in just a minute. We're going to look at some scripture in just a few minutes on that. But all of our man-made laws that we get from the truth of knowledge of good and evil, stop cussing, start singing. Stop going to the tavern, start going to the prayer meeting. Who's saying that? And when we get to going to the prayer meeting, what are we, what are we doing it for? What are we praying? Who are we praying to? I listen to the prayers and I haven't heard, heard all everybody's prayers. That's not what I'm saying. But many of our prayers are still begging, trying to get God to do something, trying to get Jesus up off the throne because it's not finished and he's a liar. That's dirt. That's dirt. Is it finished? Is it not? And for many of us in our so-called prayers, it's not finished. And Jesus, we need you to get up. As soon as you get up out the bed, get up, get that bathrobe off, get a shower and go down to the hospital. Get up and go over to the mortgage mortgage company. Get up and go to. Get up and go down there on 12th Street. Get up and go. As dirt, he said, it is finished. Now you take the ball. Watch this. And don't run without me, but run with me. How can two walk together except they be agreed? He says, you're either for me or you're against me. All right. Again, we looked at the looked at uh, the last time we talked. We talked. We looked at the uh, the uh, uh, old covenant law under Deuteronomy that that addressed and pronounced the blessings and the cursings, and we brought out that both of them are conditional. The blessings are conditional, and the curses are conditional. But here we go. We always want to go right back to the first part 
of verses 1 through 14 and claim those blessings. Those blessings were under conditions. Are you listening? Those blessings were conditional. We're still going to the wrong place. We still go to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil instead of just freely eating from the tree of life and all the other trees that he has granted us to have access to. Okay? Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt. If thou shalt. That's, that's the blessings. Then we drop down to verse 15. Here's the curses, and it shall come to pass, if thou will not, then these curses, conditional. Can, can, can we walk with God? Can we go ahead and dig out the dirt and stop leaning to our own understanding and trust in him with all our heart so that we can begin to draw and drink from the wells of salvation, the wells of life, the wells of fullness, the wells of overflow? Now, here's what we're looking at. Digging out the dirt allows health to spring forth automatically. This is part two. Digging out the dirt allows health to spring forth automatically. Has Christ redeemed mankind from the curse of the law or not? Has Christ redeemed mankind from the curse of the law or not. Again, we, we, we got books out the yin yang talking about curses and generational curses. That's sad. And those writers and publishers are making all kind of money off of the so-called believers. And they're making all kind of, kind of money off of people, period, that's trying to figure out how come they can't get from under the bus. Because faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God, not the way of the not the word of the liar who comes saying, hath God said, wanting to exchange the truth for the lie. Do you know that the Adams walked in dominion and walked in their true isness as long as they were one with the truth? And when they divorced themselves from the truth, they divorced themselves from life. Oh, they're just existing. They're just existing now. They divorced themselves from love. Adam no longer loves the Lord, nor does he love Miss Adam. He doesn't love anything. He doesn't love the garden. He's tearing up the garden, tearing fig leaves off the trees. He's become destructive. He's behaving like the thief who comes up but steal, kill, and destroy. Because he severed himself from the truth, from being one with the truth. So he has no ability to love. I'm talking about agape. I'm not talking about eros where, again, it's all about me and how's it going to benefit me. No, 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 no. We're talking about agape. He has, he has no capability of love. He severed himself. He divorced himself from love to marry another. Dirt. Somebody say dirt. All right. And out of that generation came the sons of Adam. However, the last Adam has come. Come on here, somebody. To redeem, here it is again, mankind from the curse of the law, not with it. Again, we teach and we believe and we pray that he's redeemed us with the curse. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, but we got this generational curse. You, you, you don't understand you don't either you don't understand the truth that makes you free or you have chosen to be ignorant of the truth that makes you free he said ignorant ignorant no ignorant doesn't mean we don't know ignorant means we've ignored what we've known we've ignored what we knew we ignored the truth, which leaves me now with the lie. Dirt. Take out the dirt. Let's go to Luke, the 11th chapter. I'm trying to hit this as fast as I can because I don't want to, I don't, I hope we don't have a part three of this because we still got a good ways to go. 
Luke, the 11th chapter, uh, verses 21 through 26, and is married with Matthew, the 12th chapter, verses 44 and 45. So it's Luke, the 11th chapter, verses 21 through 26, this married with Matthew, the 12th chapter, verses 44 and 45. I actually think I read some of this the last time I taught this. So let's just let's roll really fast, as fast as we can. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. When a strong man who's armed keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger, then he shall come upon him and overcome him and take from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoil. I'm sorry, I read that as a question. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcometh him and take from him all his armor wherein he trusted, it is then that he divided his spoil. Watch this. Listening to what it is he's trusting. Listen to what it is the strong man, not the stronger man. The strong man has placed his trust and the place that he has placed his trust is his armor. Just roll with me, roll with me. The strong man's armor is the thing he trusts. Now watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me see, let me flip it. The thing that the strong, not the stronger man, the strong man, the thing that the strong man trusts in becomes his armor. It becomes his ammunition. It becomes his empowerment. Watch this. What is the thing that the strong man is trusting in? The strong man is trusting in our not trusting in the Lord. The strong man is trusting in our not trusting in the Lord. He's trusting in our trust to be defeated. He's trusting in our trust to be cursed and have a generational curse. He's trusting in our trust to never have enough, to never be good enough, to never have arrived. He's trusting in our trust to be bitter, to operate in complaint, to not believe the truth that makes us free. He's trusting in our trust in old cliches and superstitions. He's trusting in our trust in the world's report. He's trusting in our trust. Are you getting that? Did you get that? Here's what Jesus says. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattered abroad. Verse 24, for when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through the dry places. He's walking where there is no water. He's walking where no water is being access accessible. He's walking where the whales have already been stopped up by dirt. Whether it's some of his imps that came and stopped them up, whether it's the doctor's report, whether it's the lawyer's report, whether it's the news report, maybe it's your own report and negativity. Who, whoever gossip and backbiting that stops up the well. So he's looking for dry places so he can rest in the dry places. He can't rest where there's living water. He can't rest where the power of salvation. And, and as I say salvation, you know what I heard? Yeshua. Salvation one, is one of his names, salvation. His name is salvation. He, he can't be comfortable in rest. He, he can't coexist. Come on now. Where there's water, living water, zoe, all right? 
All right. It says he's seeking dry places, trying to find somewhere to rest. But when he doesn't find it, he says to himself, I will return to my house. Look at his trust. Look at his armor. I will return to my house. In other words, the house or the home or the family that I was at previously. The home that gave me access previously. The family that gave me access previously. I'm going to go back and see if that door is still open. I'm going to go back and see if that unbelief in the Lord is still there. I'm going to go back and see, are they still trusting in calamity and in storms and being an outcast and being condemned? I'm going to go back and see if they're still trusting in the conditional blessings and cursings, curses of the law. I'm going to go back where I used to abide. And it says, when he does, he comes back and finds it empty and garnished and swept. Did you hear that? But it's empty. And he goes in and he takes seven others along with him. That's worse than he is. And the state of that home, the state of that family, the state of that situation is worse than it was at first. Even so, listen to what Jesus says, even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. Why is that? Because the wicked generation won't do what it takes. They want to hear the word, but they don't want to do the word. Are you listening? The wicked, again, looking very faithful, looking very serious, looking very intentional, hear the word, uh, got every YouTube preacher going, uh, buying every a CD, an MP3, and book that can be bought, looking very intentional, but are not doers of the word. The wicked generation won't do what they're supposed to do, won't do their part, won't be responsible, want to be lazy and indifferent and callous, want to play with compromise, want to play in the dirt, okay? We have been redeemed from the curse of the law, absolutely redeemed. But tragically, the terminology and the experience is still familiar. Let's go to, when I mentioned the law a while ago, let's go to Romans, dirt, dirt, dirt. We defined some dirt as the law, as well as the laws that are man-made, that we made up, that we got from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans, the seventh chapter. And I'm looking at, I'm actually going to start with verses seven through 13. And then I'm going to go back up to verse six. And then I'm going to go back up to verse five. Okay. Romans, the seventh chapter, starting with verse seven through 13, back up to verse six, and then back up to verse five. Listen to this. Well, then, am I suggesting that the law of God is sinful? Of course not. You say, well, wait, though, you, you, you put the law in, in the category of dirt a while ago. Keep going. Keep come on. Keep, keep, keep coming. Keep coming. Am I suggesting that the law of God is sinful? Of course not. In fact, watch this. It was the law that showed me my sin. I would have never known that coveting is wrong if the law had not said, you must not covet. You hear what Paul said? Paul said, I was looking and I was coveting. You know, uh, Paul, before he got converted, he's looking for position. He's looking for elevation. He's trying to be the man. He was the man, according to men. <laughs> coveting this, Paul lets us in on something. Coveting this. Co he said, I would have known coveting was a problem. I didn't realize it was a problem. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at that prestige and I'm coveting this. He said, I didn't know it was a problem. Without the law, are you listening? Oh man, I, 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 I could go some places with that. I didn't know it was a problem without the law. He said, but sin used the commandment to arouse all kind of covetous desires within me. For without the law, sin was dead and would not have that kind of power. 
let's just play with something for instance. I, I want to use something that I've heard Andrew Womack use. He talks about there being a sign, for instance, on the born that says, do not enter. And there are kids out playing by the born, but the sign says, do not enter by any terms. Do not come into this born. And when they see it, the boys are looking at it thinking, hmm, I know why we can't go in there. And they're looking at each other. I triple dog dare you. Go in there and see what's in there. And how many know what's getting ready to happen? They saw the sign. They read the law. But how many knows what's getting ready to happen? One of them rascals, if not two of them, are on their way in that door why the others look out and when the two go inspired out and come back and said we didn't see nothing y'all come on in now guess what they've broken the law right they're trespassing right because a sign said don't do it i don't uh, don't ask me how, why that is don't ask me why that is but something within the, that sinful nature that flesh says you don't tell me what to do if when you say don't i'm going to how many know that's backwards? How many know that's against life? How many know that's there? Right? Okay, let me keep going. He said, but sin used the command to arouse all kind of covet desires within me. For without the law, sin was dead and would not have that kind of power. Verse nine, for I was alive without the law once. He's kicking it. I don't have no problems. There's no stop signs. There's no rules and regulations. I'm alive. I'm free. I got liberty. Oh, don't that sound like worldly talk? No, no. You just don't know. You're standing there like a deer in headlights and a train is burling down the track. Now, let me keep going because the law is good. The law is holy. The law is just. The law is righteous. Okay. But. Let me keep going. Where am I at? He said, I discovered that the law's commands, which were supposed to bring life, brought spiritual death instead. Sin, again, took advantage of those commands and deceived me. It used the commands to kill me. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? Who is it that's using the commandments, who is it that's using the law? Who is it that's using that that's good and right, that that is for life? Who is it that's using it, but perverting it and using it against us? Hath God said, did he really say that? Did he really mean that? Is he keeping something from you? Isn't there more to life than what he is giving you? No, he is life. He is life. He is life. And he has given us himself. All right? Life and life more abundantly. So sin took advantage of the commandments and deceived me. It used the commandments to kill me. It used the commandment sin, use the commandments to kill me, to destroy me, to steal my health, to steal my peace, to steal my joy, to throw me under the bus, to cause me to be a peace breaker, sin, because I'm backbiting. I don't like nobody. I'm disappointed. I'm jealous. I'm envious. Sin. Use that which was good against me. Sin. The wages of sin is death. Listen to that. Please know that. The wages of sin is death. So the enemy comes to take that which is good and pervert it. That's all he can do. He's perverse. All right. Let me keep going. But still, the law itself is holy and his commands are holy and just and good. Verse 13, but how can that be? Was then that which is good made death unto me? Of course not. But sin, the law made sin appear as sin. 
If you don't have a law, where is there sin? If there's no law on the highway telling me what the speed limit is, what is the speed limit? I can drive as slow as I want to or as fast and reckless as I want to. And I haven't broken any law because there is no law posted. But the Lord posted the law. And again, thou shall not the law. This is the speed limit. These are the guidelines. Uh, this is what. And somebody's going to always push the envelope because somebody's always listening to the Philistines. Did you get that? So there are times, not only does the Philistines put dirt in our wells, we cooperate with the Philistines and help them put dirt in our own wells. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Of course not, but it was made sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. So we see how, so we could see how terrible sin really is. Verse six. But now, oh my Lord, come on somebody. But now, somebody say, but now. Somebody say, but now. We have been released from the law, for we died through it and are no longer captive to its power. Do it again. We have been released from the law. How have we been released from the law? Because we've been delivered from sin. If any man, oh, come on, somebody, is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are brand spanking new. And the next verse says, and all of these things are of God. And we are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So then that law is gone because the sin is gone. Matter of fact, there's another passage. Is it Timothy? I can't remember if it's Timothy or not, where it talks about the law is not made for a righteous man because a righteous man has a different law. It's the law of love. It's the law of truth. It's the law of holiness. It's the law of righteousness. So I don't need an external, oh, come on here. I don't need an external law telling me what to do. The agape tells me what to do. Are you listening? But it's not just it's telling me what to do. It's not just dictating to me what to do. The two have been made one, and now I walk as agape. Are you listening? So not only do I need to get busy digging out the dirt from my own well, now as I go forth freed from the dirt from my own well, and drawing and drinking from the wells of salvation myself. Now I can come and give you a drink. Watch this. And let you taste and see that the Lord is good for yourself. And now I can assist you in digging out the dirt from your own well. But I can't do it for you. I can assist you. I can help you. And you begin to get your own incentive. Watch this. And now you don't need my help. You're doing it yourself. But not only are you doing it yourself for you, now you're doing it assisting somebody else. And they get strengthened. And they receive life. They receive encouragement. They begin to walk in victory. Watch this. Now they're going to help somebody else. That's going to help somebody else. That's going, oh, come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> ah. He says, let me go back to verse six. But now we have been released from the law. Man. And again, it's because we have been released from sin. The law does not belong to a righteous man. The law is not for a righteous man. The righteous man is righteous. We've been released from the law for we died to it and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, watch this, not in the old way of obeying the law of the letter, but in the new way of living in the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. 
Verse five, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin were by the law. They did work, which were by the law, worked in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But we're not in the flesh anymore. Romans the eighth chapter said, we're not in the flesh anymore. Oh, we're in the body, but it's talking about in the flesh is for us being controlled and dominated as if the flesh is our Lord. Jesus is Lord. And as many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. My time is running out. I'm telling you, I really didn't want part three. Let me see what we can do. I'm going to try to just read these next passages. I'm at 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter three. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. Our sufficiency is of God, who always, excuse me, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Somebody say new. Somebody said new. Remember, remember a while ago when I was talking about the law, I was talking about that there was under the Old Testament, the Old covenant okay he said but now come on here our sufficiency is of god not based on our performance our meriting our trying to keep a law all right oh my god and because our sufficiency is in him in christ jesus he has made us able ministers of the new testament not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Verse seven, for if, listen to this, for if the ministration of death written and engraved in stones, wait a minute, did you hear what he called it? If the ministration, instead of administration, he said, if the ministration of death, which was written and engraved on stones, wait, wait, what is he talking about? What was written and engraved on stones? According to what we know, it was the 10, you got it. Commandments. Look what, look what Paul is saying. Verse seven. But if the ministration of death, which was written and engraved in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away with, because the new was coming, y'all. That was just a shadow. The new was coming and he has come. How shall not, watch this, the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious. Verse nine, here he goes again. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness. Watch this. He has called the law, the administration of death, and the administration of condemnation. Somebody say dirt. Are you getting this? Are you getting confused? The law is holy. We've already said that. The law is just and right. The law is good. But the law appeared or was given to show me that I couldn't keep it, first off, and to cry out for the mercies of God and be totally receptive at his gift of grace. Somebody say gift of grace. By grace, we are saved, not of works of righteousness, which we have done. It is the gift of God. Paul says here in verse eight, how shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious? If the ministration of condemnation, he said, if the law had glory, come on here, somebody. How much more glorious is the ministration of righteousness? It exceeds the glory of the old, y'all. The old was just a shadow. The old was just a picture. It was just a portrait of him that was to come. If I've got the portrait, I'm looking at the portrait, and I'm loving the portrait, and I'm kissing the portrait, and I'm dancing with the portrait, and him who is to come comes. And I keep kissing the portrait and I keep hugging the portrait, but I ignore him that has come. Something wrong. 
something, something, something wrong, something, something wrong, y'all, something wrong, something wrong. And how many folk keep going back to the portrait and kissing the portrait and loving on the portrait and dancing with the portrait and talking about the portrait as if Jesus has not come, as if he's not here. Dirt, dirt, because the portrait can't give me living water. The portrait can't answer my prayers. The portrait can't heal my body. The portrait can give me joy and peace. The portrait has nothing for me. But the portrait was to point me to him who was coming. Oh, my goodness. Verse 10, even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth it. Verse 11, for if that which is done away was glorious, how much more that which remains. Did you hear that? The shadow is gone. Of course it's gone. The light has come. And the light has come forever more. All right? The shadow served its purpose. Quit going back into the shadows. Quit going back into the dark. Quit going back into the deception. Quit going back playing in the dirt. Dig the dirt out of your wells that have been given you as your birthright, as your inheritance. Get the dirt out so that you can draw from the waters and drink from the wells of salvation. I promise you, many times we pray, we pray in and we beg in and we fast in God to do something for us and come see about us and help us. And all we need to do is get the dirt out the well and drink and receive health from the waters of salvation, the waters of life. He's given us, I hear you, Lord, he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. But we're doing nothing with it and we're acting as if he's done nothing. Because we've refused to believe. We've ignored, which means chosen to be ignorant concerning the truth that we were to know that would make us free. Let's see, I've got 10 minutes. I'm gonna just cram this, I think. First John, first John, first John chapter five, first John chapter five, verses 17 through 21. First John chapter five, verses 17 through 21. We're still talking about digging out the dirt and drawing from the wells of salvation for in doing so, It allows health to spring forth automatically. And when I'm talking about health, I'm, just, I'm not just talking about natural physical health. I'm talking about mental health, emotional health. Maybe your finances need some help. Oh, come on here, somebody. <laughs> He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Again, 1 John chapter 5. Man, maybe we need relational health. Maybe the family needs to be restored. Oh my God, 1 John chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. All unrighteousness is sin. All, all of it. We can't justify it. We can't fix it. We can't, we can't say, well, well, this is really what happened. I wouldn't have done. No, 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 no. We're not talking about the blame game. All unrighteousness is sin. We need to stop playing with it. Uh, uh, stop covering it over. Stop making it acceptable because we really are not making it acceptable because it's not acceptable. All sin, all sin. The wages of sin is death. Okay, period. Whether you're sneaking in the backyard or in the back alley or with all sin, the wages is death. Understand that. Now don't forget, the new man is not compatible with sin. It's not looking for sin. He has nothing to do with sin. He's walking in righteousness. He's walking in the spirit. As Christ is, so is he, so are we in this world. What would have happened if the church had taught this message, the gospel, the good news, the transforming truth and sanctifying power of the gospel, which is the power of God unto wholeness? Do you, can you see the saints walking forth as he walked? 
If we had been hearing the truth whereby faith comes, instead of this watered down mess, mess, dirt that the devil offered. No, let me, let me pull back. Let me pull back. I'm really trying to read this. First John chapter five, verses 17 through 21. And all unrighteousness is sin, but not every sin leads to death. We know absolutely, watch this, we know absolutely that everyone born of God does not deliberately and knowingly practice committing sin. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one does not lay hold, get a grip on him, or touch him. Did you just see that? Remember earlier we read in Luke, was it in Luke where we were? Yeah, Luke the 11th chapter, how the wicked one was trying to come back to that house. This one, the wicked one can't even touch him. Are you listening? Because he knows who he is, not really who the Christ is. Not merely who the Savior and Redeemer is. He know who he is in Christ Jesus. If I'm in Christ Jesus and he's my abode, how can the devil touch me? See, we, we want to go in and out, so to speak. Theoretically, that's not possible, but in our mentality, because we're not casting down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, against the truth, against the victory against the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. We're not casting down every thought. We plan with it. We think, and then the devil said, has God said, now you know good and well. Now, you, are you sure? Is that what you believe? He, again, wants our trust. Remember, we talked about that a while ago. The enemy wants my trust in him and what he's saying. The situation wants my trust in what it's saying. The circumstances want my trust in what it's saying and what it's doing. I was in the shower the day before yesterday, I think it was, or one day, and my knees have been giving me some problems. And um, I was, uh, was taking a shower and I said, you are healed. And I heard my knee said, has God said, my knee said that, my knee said, has God said, you were healed. My knees, because the pain was, 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 and there was stiffness. My knees. How many know things talk to us? Oh yeah, oh, okay, okay. My knees was talking to me and being persistent on being contrary to my birthright, to my new illness, to my new isness, to my new identity in Christ. My knees was talking to me. You know what I had to do? I said, hold up now. And I began to cast down every thought and imagination that was exalting itself against the knowledge of God. My knees, y'all, my knees was talking to me. And they've been talking to me, but this time it was bold. I got back like, what? Okay, I know y'all, whatever, I don't, whatever, whatever. What time is it? Oh, y'all. He that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one does not lay hold, get a grip on him, or touch him. And we know positively that we are of God and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. And too many of us is running to the world around us to get our instruction. Let me keep going. We know that the son of God has come. Joy to the world. And he, ha and he has, and he has given us understanding and insight progressively to perceive, recognize, and come to know him better and more clearly. And to be able to see who the true God is personally. And now we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with the true son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He is the only true God and he is eternal life. Little children, stop playing in the dirt. Keep yourself from idols, false gods, from any sort of substitute for him or replacement of him that would take place in your life 
Keep yourself from anything and everything that would occupy the place in your heart that's do God alone. Stop, excuse me, that would be stopping up your wells of life and resulting in death. We probably got what, five minutes? Yep, five minutes. Oh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reference this. Proverbs chapter three. Proverbs chapter three, verses one through thirteen. My son, if you truly want to live, if you truly want a long and satisfying life, never forget these things that I've taught you. Follow closely every truth that I've given you. Then you will have a full, rewarding, prosperous life. Let not mercy and truth be forsaken by thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tablet of thine heart and be faithful to all that you've been taught. Let your life be shaped by integrity. That's how you will find good success, favor, and understanding with both God and man. Trust in the Lord completely with all thy heart and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you and he will lead you in every decision you ought to make. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Recognize him as the God that he is. Become intimate with him in regards to everything as you are living and walking together, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Don't think for a moment that you know it all. For wisdom comes when we revere and adore him with undivided devotion and avoid evil. For in so doing, it shall be health to thy flesh and refreshment and rejuvenation to thy bones. Honor and glorify the Lord with thy substance and with every increase that comes to you. Then shall your borns be filled with plenty, and thy barrels shall burst out with new wine. Every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy. My child, when the Lord God speaks to you, despise not his correction, neither take his words lightly, and never be upset exasperated or condemned when he corrects you for the father dis discipline comes only from his passionate love and pleasure for you for whom the lord loveth he corrects even when it seems like his correction is harsh is proof of his love and honor for you blessed is the one who digs out wisdom and the one who draws on understanding, for they shall obtain kingdom life. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 23. My son, attend unto my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. In Proverbs, the 14th chapter, verse 30, a sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy is the rottenness of the bones. Beloved, the Spirit is speaking to each and every one of us to dig out the dirt and draw from the wells of salvation that have already been given us. We're not praying and asking for them. It's already been given us. May we be found being doers of the word and not hearers only, not because we're legalistic, and because we're keeping a law, but we, because we believe him who loves us and has lavished us with all things above 
and beyond. God bless you and thank you for joining me for another Planting the Heavens in the Earth. I am Faye Powell, your host and have been your planter for today. I look forward to seeing you again next time. God bless.